Call the meeting to order. The motion moved by Councilor Morio, seconded by Councilor Delorier. Resolve that the agenda for the September 19th regular meeting council be received. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. And then we got number five. We have a motion moved by Councilor Morio, seconded by Councilor Delorier. Resolve the minutes of the September 5th regular meeting council be adopted and received. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Okay, item four one on the delegation. We might as well do one hearing. Well, there's there out in the lobby way. Okay, so we'll, we'll go ahead and we'll do the um, first variation. Variation. Uh, so we're in variation order application four two thousand and seventeen. I call the hearing to order on conditional use application three. To, that's the wrong one. Right. Okay. I call the variation uh, application hearing on application 4 2015 to order. The purpose of the hearing is to hear representation for or against the following variation application. To allow the construction of a deck at the front of the house, extending four feet in front of the house, and to vary the setback distance from 30 feet to 26 feet for the front deck on the property described as lot 5, plan 2187-438 Kelsey Drive. The requirements of Section 169 of the Planning Act have been adhered to. I request any person make a representation to the hearing state their name and civic address. Can council understand what's supposed to be happening here? Any questions? So uh, have the, have the uh, applicants said made any reason why the deck can't be at the back of the house? Yeah. Or it's for, there's a, there was a uh, stairway I understand. But they want an actual deck where they're going to sit out in the front of the house. They remove the stair. Oh, yep. They remove the staircase yep. and they want to build a deck on the front, not the back of the front. It was advertised. There was no opposition, no calls. Any other discussion? So, having heard all present, I declare the hearing adjourned. We have the motion moved by Councillor Morio, second by Councillor Lord, resolved the variation order application for 2017 to allow the construction of the deck at the front of the house, extending four feet in front of the house, and to vary the setback distance from 30 feet to 26 feet to the front of the deck of the property located at Lot 5, Plan 2187, 438 Kelsey Drive be approved. No discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carry. It's done. Get to work. <laughs> <laughs> uh, are they RCMP coming in? Are we just okay? Good. Sure. Good. Council invited you because council had some questions, so uh, I'll just open the floor to councillors and you can ask any questions you have of the officers. Okay, Councillor Morrill. Uh, two questions. How did uh, the summer auxiliary go this summer? Is he still on staff with you guys? And yep, Miles Grandfield. Basically, it's coming to an end. Okay. Uh, just before the end of this month, I think it was September 25th. And essentially, that as of this morning, I requested an extension. A couple, about two and a half weeks ago, I already broached the topic with the district, and this time I formalized it. Uh, we can only get a piece at a time because we're competing against other places that are requesting reservists. But I put a spin on it, like I need to, and went through district like I need to, and then they've been very good at advocating on our behalf. And essentially, that uh, <clears throat> The Danko, when I have the conversations with, convinces our line officer, then it's superintendent to superintendent, and then they have a little more push. So okay. essentially, we're, I put some rationale that I can't share tonight, but that's, that's you got to show where the need is, and basically, I've shown where there's a need, and I'm hoping that it gets some easier. Okay. 
would a letter from the council here help support you with that? Um, yeah, it would. Yeah. Okay. We have in November at the municipal convention, we meet with the officers of the division, so we could bring it up at that time also. Okay. I know personally that, that Miles being here in, in the summer months has just provided the the, the stability that, that we need here because we're so short and all the members are, you know, are, are uh, struggling to get done everything and, and without Miles I don't, I don't think we could have been as, as successful as we're trying to be because Miles brings so much uh, experience and, and morale and, uh, and hard work because he's accomplished so many different uh, files while he's you know there and, and advice and guidance on every shift that he's that he's there that the members we really need miles and uh, it's been so helpful for us to so have basically them. kept your staffing levels more or less even not as an extra person with the holidays not the summer. with us we haven't been running into deficit but other detachments have but we've had like soft and hard vacancies and it constantly changes each time we ask mm -hmm. and right now we're going to have one soft vacancy one hard vacancy for a short period of time but we also have certain goals operationally that we're, we're purporting uh, to district and hopefully they'll throw some, throw some weight behind that. Uh, basically with Miles, not only he brings all the things that uh, Ross pointed out, but we've also taken advantage of him administratively because he's got a wealth of experience as a supervisor at this detachment. And essentially he's also coached our clerks a little bit and helped our constables and their corporals as well and helped them. It's basically, I always relied on Miles in the past, and essentially we took full advantage of him because he's got a, repo, a repertoire of, of knowledge and skills. Okay, and the second question, how was there any foot patrols, how did that go through this summer? <coughs> um, yes, I don't have the numbers for the foot patrols, and, and because of the busyness, there wasn't as many as, as we would have liked, but there there definitely was, and Miles made, made an uh, extra effort on, on that as well, and sometimes when he wasn't as busy, but Miles took on, you know, a, a lot of files in, in addition to, you know, being backup for everyone and assisting on other people's files, he's taking his own files and stuff, so that also takes takes away from the time, you know, for the for the actual foot patrols, but I know Miles would be into the park and uh, uh, stuff like that. The other thing too with the foot patrols, Miles has been, has also done some nighttime foot patrols and bike patrols as well, working in concert with members in vehicles if you can't put a prisoner on a bicycle. Right. There's a lot of incidences occurring in the parks this summer and stuff like that that you guys are probably well aware of and stuff like that. that yes. If they see a uh, marked cruiser coming up and stuff like that, they all scatter, but you can't, if you walk up on them, it's... Uh, and there's been a number of different members actually walking there at nighttime because they've been flipping the emails to us and we've been checking Ross and I. And since we could always like to do more, but there is a surprise of that have happened. Council Gloria. Um, a program that ran a number of years ago, and I'm not sure the status of it, but it was different than the auxiliary constable program. It was, a, it was more of a, a citizen, uh, lack of a better term, an, an un unarmed citizen would I, I think I know what you mean. Yeah. There, there are three types of programs that I was acquainted with. One was simply a ride-along program that's gone yeah. by the wayside. Yeah, it wasn't. And then there's the auxiliary thing that's pretty much gone by the wayside too because they don't wear a uniform, they can't be operational. But I think you're talking about citizens on patrol. No, no, no. Not, it, was, it was, you know, I, I, I know. I think it was the auxiliary. Yeah, they, like Summer Karen Street. Neely used to no. do it and, and Blair, Blair Martin. Blair Martin used to do it. Auxiliary program. Yeah. It's gone. It's gone? Is it, is it coming Ottawa. back in any other, other form? No. No. Well, no, it's not the same form. Basically, they wear like a golf shirt, slacks, and they'll do school talks, but they can't do anything operational okay. at all. It's the auxiliary program <laughs> is dead, unfortunately. Because the auxiliary program, as you know, would be somebody from the community, knows the community, cares about the community, and then basically they would ride along with the regular member. And with their, under the direction of the regular member, um, basically they had peace officer status, and they had that protection. Plus all the local insight. That Absolutely, and that's very important to us. So, and that's just totally dead. Okay. Totally dead, it's gone. So, could you put that on our list to ask? The sure. The yeah. <laughs> so, uh, one other question is, uh, I know you've been here previously and about the loud muffler issue, and, and you mentioned to us to concerned citizens if they if they could get a license plate or, or report it. And I guess the feedback we're getting is when they do do that, they're getting basically, I, and I don't know if it's an officer or if, or if it's a clerk, but basically saying we don't have time for that kind of, kind of so mm. I, I don't know. I wonder if that's a misunderstanding because we've had conversations and I know some of the constables are a little um, concerned that because to us it's a wrong, they're taking advantage of, 
What's that? No, we're busy, yeah. but it yeah. doesn't matter. Because we can fit things in between, we can pause and take a different direction. And sometimes when we pause and take a different direction, it recharges our batteries because maybe we're getting a little bit wore out with beanies or some of these getting the same results over and over again, some of the same players. And then essentially, okay, now I'm doing something different, clear my head, and okay. And, and I know myself, when I was a constable, I would feel refreshed. So no, that's not the issue. Of, I don't know if there was a, a particular member or a clerk that said that or whether there was just... Uh, because the member didn't go there right away or what it is or how it was presented but to basically I'll bring it up and I'll send an email out to everybody. They've been really good the responses to me though. Go ahead. I, I think you know, I'm surprised to hear that because the number of times that we've mentioned at the office whether at Detasha meetings or internally at emails to say that you know town council and, and the town of Swan River and anyone who can hear these mufflers is upset about mufflers that's a, that's you know what, what I tell somebody if I stop them I said there's getting a, there's a lot of calls that come to the police station and the town council about the loud mufflers you need to get your mouth for quiet you know on the odd person that I've stopped but I'm so I'm surprised that anybody at our office would say that they don't have time for it because we've kind of tried to drill that into everybody's uh, mind that everybody's concerned about it because we definitely are concerned and I made it clear too internally that okay I'm hearing the loud mufflers when I'm in my own vehicle and I'm dressed like this sort of thing. And I look for a place to get one, but I don't get them. And I'm annoyed. And essentially then I'll send my email around. And then we have a couple of the young constables, it's a little, the more, ones with more service too. With the younger ones, they'll just bang right now and report back, email within 24 or 48 hours, okay, I've done this and I've done that. But it, it, could, it could be in here, it could be a minute, 20, it could be on a highway. But they get in the message, but we need the feedback that we're getting. We prefer, uh, people will call in as things happen to us. But we know reality is not everybody's going to do that. They're going to be calling you guys. You're going to be losing voice, leaving voice messages. They're not going to want the police involvement, but they want their concern heard. So when I get the emails and that, that's, that's, that's fine. We'll work with what we got, encourage them. But if they're not going to do it, we'll take what we got and we'll, we'll adjust accordingly. And hopefully we can make some differences. But it seems when you deal with a bit and then there's other people coming in there and they're doing stuff. And some of these people with the loud mufflers, they're, they're about my age too. And they're men and women, so I, I came across women today. Yeah. So my age. So with that, like, does it matter if it's a Manitoba plate or Saskatchewan no. plate no. or anything? No, this is Manitoba Manitoba laws. Okay. Yeah. Was, I pulled one a couple of days ago when it was a Saskatchewan plate. And it's like elderly couple in there. And it's like you need your earmuffs to be inside their vehicle. And they yeah. knew what they were doing because you, you're going down Main Street and they're accelerating stop like you're. They're trying to make the noise and not. Mm -hmm. drive consistent. It's one thing to have the, the noise when you turn at an intersection, but to act, purposely make it crack yeah. when you're driving down a street um, in the evening is... Personally, it really annoys me. So yeah. keep it coming to us and, and we'll keep sending you emails. Just a query, do you keep data on the number of uh, complaints you've had relative to mufflers and the consequences of, of the investigation that, that took place? So I think, uh, go ahead. Have you had 20 guys giving tickets out? Is there any success from concern of the community? I don't have the numbers. I don't have the numbers. Um, you know, we could run a, if it's difficult to, like if, if a file is scored as other moving traffic, which would that, that would fall under, yeah. well then we could check how many other moving traffic files we have and then see how many of those are the mufflers. But we're just not getting the numbers. Like yeah. you, the number of files that you you probably get and then, but the people that call us, we're, there's just not, like I, I read the files and supervise the files that come in and I, I there's just hardly any files coming in about, about the loud mufflers. There's more too. When there's a patrol, they're not necessarily getting somebody with a loud muffler, but they're going to be getting somebody. Because it's easy so to get a result. If we if we yeah. have the file number, like I said before, if we get the file with the license plate and the license plate matches the description, we will make an effort to contact that person and let them know, you know, if there's something we can do about it. Like, I'd rather contact them immediately than sit and wait for them to do it again because they're not stopping the problem. we got to... If we get a plate, we can contact them. Like if it's a Saskatchewan person, we can just, we could make an attempt, we will make an attempt to contact that person in Saskatchewan if they've got a phone number that we can reach. You know, we may not bother another detachment if they're not easy, easily reached. You know, if, if they're not on our system and don't have a phone number, well, <clears throat> we wouldn't probably get Kamsap or Pally or Yorkton to look for, go to their house and give them, tell them they were allowed, had a lot of muffler in, in, in Saskatchewan. But if I could, if our members here could phone them, you know, we, that's an easy thing for us to do and say, look, last time we heard Swiner, your muffler was loud, just letting you know that that's, that's a concern, you know, and, and then hopefully what, that has so to What I've heard is that you haven't had any complaints to get to your office. Yeah, like no. I, I do not see the complaints coming in. Okay, the second question I have, uh, your department sent us in the past a little news updates, a month of RCMP activities, month of a glance, we did this, we did that, we did this, and that's good for us. 
for yeah for us when we see hey that's all good so then we can spread that message also you may be too busy to do that to them for all that what was it how often we get that he's talking about the monthly reports yeah and they are working on that yeah. to get us yeah, yeah. They might have to compile some so they were kind of helpful yeah, to me personally and okay. I always like them to do what you guys are up to but I don't know if Yes. The report that Dwayne's talking about is the one that was the running total of we were at the school, we're at this, that, like those PR type event reports. Oh yes, the other public relations. Mm -hmm. Well, and now that the school year started up, you know, we'll have to start doing, you know, doing the school business. Like over the summer, we wouldn't have had those kind of um, things going on as much. But now, when when the school each uh, member is a uh, school that they go and visit, so there should be some things like that to report on. That could be great. Uh, we could help. Okay. I have a question. It might not be within your jurisdiction, but uh, the major drug operation that happened here some months ago, does the Crown keep you updated to where that is and how the process is going or not? Um, that file would be going to trial, and that would be something we could report back to you at a, at a, you know, a more okay. um, appropriate time. Okay. One other question um, on the non-emergency line. I think it's listed in the phone book. Is that is that still staffed 24 hours a day? Because I get I guess there was a, a citizen that had a concern with they thought something was going on in the park, but they felt silly having <coughs> one over it because they knew it, it was probably just some kids up to no good, not necessarily like uh, an emergency. So it is the non-emergency line that's listed in the phone book. Is that <coughs> Get, does that get answered 24 hours a day, or, or whenever? That not, was 24 hours, 24 not 24 hours. hours a day, but whenever you have somebody on, or, or I think anytime somebody approaches you with that type of a thing, you should just encourage them to call the line. Anyone? Even if it says, is it, if they get the prompt that says, is this an emergency? But they feel they want some police action. There's nothing wrong okay. with calling the other line and saying, you know, this is what's happening. You know, they, and if there's a member available, then they could dispatch it. Whereas if somebody waits until the next day and they're they're worried about it, well, it's not going to help. You know, yeah. it's better to just. It's better to err on the side of caution and phone the emergency line and say, I know I think there's it's not an emergency, but I think there's some kids up to some stuff in the park. Well then the telecoms operator in Winnipeg, they're trained, you know, they've been dealing with uh, uh, so many calls all the time. They'll they'll know whether to dispatch somebody or whether they're too busy or you know, or whether to hold it in the queue and give it to somebody that next once they're clear of a call, you know, that's what they do. The administrative line is only for follow up and investigations you already have. If there's okay. something new or happening right now and it's going to be done within a few minutes, then you don't want to leave a message on a recording or you, you want you want the complaint. Yeah, so you don't have a like a dedicated non-emergency seven-digit number to call that goes to like your telecoms that it's no. non-emergency. No. So, so, you, so you want everybody, like that's the password that it, when they ask us to yeah. dial 911, if you want police action, right away it's... The admin line is Monday to Friday when we have clerks and the clerks right. are answering it. And basically anything else after hours or weekends or emergency, it should be, it should be the complaint line. And that's, that's the way we're set up. But basically, they will create a file and they will basically dispatch and then they will monitor as appropriate the members that have gone. It's, it's a public officer safety. It's just to get over to stigma. Some people don't want to dial 911 for... Well, they're 3454. Yeah. So, but it's yeah. the same it still gets into the same place. Same thing, so. yeah. um, they just... But if it's a concern for them, yeah. then they have to take that extra step and call it in, you know, because yeah. 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 well, they want to call it in, but they don't want to be tied, like, because they're on the other side, 911 is like mm -hmm. for true emergencies and not mm -hmm. being murdered or something. Exactly. Yeah. Not I like, you. not like the law. 3454, then. Yeah, not like, like <coughs> Love Muffa, for instance. Like, mm -hmm. some people will not call 911 to complain about Love Muffa, but they want to. Yeah, the admin lines. Don't ever go to dispatch yeah. ever in Alberta, Saskatchewan, or Manitoba. They don't. Right. It's very. They couldn't do that. Very costly. Basically, it's the emergency lines, and that's where you get your twenty-four hour dispatches, and then you can instantly get a hold of us. Councilor, so when I dial nine one one, which I don't believe I ever have, they decide whether it's a health issue or an RCMP issue or whatever issue it is. Well, I'm not sure exactly how they're set up here, but Saskatchewan is almost like you flip a switch police, ambulance, or fire, but quite often do all three of them dispatch, yeah. depending on what type of emergency. If it's a vehicle accident, chances are they're going to dispatch all, and then maybe somebody will counsel the other emergency service and say, hey, it's not what it seemed, we don't need fire. If somebody's getting beat up in the park, I hear yeah. screaming down there, they would just automatically go to RCMP, I think. Yes. Yeah, like when, when you call the PSAP number, like the 911 goes to Brandon, um, first question he asks is, 
911 police fire emergency and you tell them what you want and then they'll shunt it to either telecoms and ran in for EMS when they for RCP or keep it for a fire. Yeah, I don't think these no. governments spend a lot of time they they, they shunt it, it like as soon as you say police, it's like please hold click and then you fire it off to your telecoms. Mm -hmm. or, and I think you know the people should call our three four five four number because then you know that they're automatically looking for the police. Whereas if it's 911 where it's an assault in progress, well that's that's a good one to call because it is an actual emergency, it's an assault in progress. But if it's just something that they want police action, I think 3454 is better because then it, they're not going to call the ambulance and the fire department in that same call. So if people get in, in the habit of calling 3454 with something that they want more more uh, action right away, but it's not a 911, it's still getting to the, the police, it's still our, it's our emergency number 3454. But it's not, in a sense, it, it, it's, I don't think, it, it doesn't go directly to 911. It goes to the telecoms operator and they know by picking it up that it must be almost, some kind of a police Almost emergency. like the car that hits the deer, they don't want police or fire there, but they want to report it to you guys. Mm -hmm. know that it's so, yeah, but it's nicer for the, for the fire department. something the RCMP might consider posting a, a little blurb, maybe. It's an RCMP police related emergency, 3454, if it's not 911. Mm -hmm. And don't feel bad about phoning. 911 or 3454 four, because that's what we're there for. Mm -hmm. I might, I'd be a little leery of phoning 911 unless I thought somebody was drowning. But I know in recent years, everybody, I hear lots of people saying, well, just call 911. You know, they don't even say 3454 anymore. You just say, yeah. Listen, you know, they call, but I yes. think that's a waste of 911. That's only my opinion. Though. There's all kinds yeah. of calls coming through 911. Lots that are in emergency, but they're still getting put through. I mean, 911's supposed to be emergency, but basically, you know, some people are. There it is. I know that truck. Yeah. Is that 27 B? That's over there, and I, 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 I just I, I know that. <coughs> so. One last thing, okay? I've been as I, as I mentioned earlier, uh, we go to the MM convention. We meet with the officers of D division. So we would like to help you out if you've got some things that you think you would like us to take to D division that might make things easier for you or help you out. Think about it, and it's in um, towards the end of November. We will definitely press those issues towards the people in the well, me personally, I think the idea that, well, like with the, with the re reservist program there that Miles is in, where the reservist program kind of has its rules where they're supposed to be shared all over the place that they're needed, but I, I think the, the ability of Miles to serve this community is so much greater than, say, somebody else that's coming in and doesn't know the area, and et cetera. It's a way bigger help for us, and I think uh, I don't know who can ever influence them on their rules as to where reservists go, but I think I would sure uh, like that if the town council could, yeah, could ask them. Okay, any other questions? Thank you very much, gentlemen. Appreciate Thank it. You. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. So we'll do the second. public hearing to order on uh, conditional use application 3 2017 the purpose of the hearing is to hear representation for or against the following conditional use application to allow the operation of a daycare in an RM residential multi uh, family zone on the property located at lots 11 12 block 30 plan 370 to 24 9th Avenue North the requirements of section 169 of the planning act have been adhered to I request any persons making representation of the hearing state their name and civic address any questions or comments from council? Councilor Moore? Um, did their plans change or? I thought this they had bought that property to be a dorm initially. They are a poor, sorry. Uh, poor yeah, they had uh, talked to uh, Ron and Derek about having it be a dorm and then uh, during the course of their conversation they said that they wanted to uh, be able to have kids there before and after school, which would make them a daycare, so therefore they need to uh, fall under the daycare for this uh, conditional use. So it's not a complete throughout the day daycare, it's just pre and post school? Yeah, yeah, that's my understanding. And my understanding as well is they're still doing the dormitory as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they just want to offer this as an addition, like it won't be the primary uh, use, which it was uh, before it was just a daycare, but they do want to offer daycare uh, operations or pre and post. Council, 
do conditional uses not tra transfer the end when the when the property is sold? No, they do. They do follow the property. Yeah. But in this case, the daycare was put in place before the new zoning bylaw. Oh, so, so it was place. grandfathered, so there never was a conditional. That's result. right. Okay. So if this ever gets sold again, so one of the conditions you can make is that it, it would leak it, that it would be end on being sold. Um, well, actually, a conditional use does follow the property. So, but can you not make that a condition of like I mean, a, con a conditional use is allows us to put conditions on its usage. So if they sell the property, that conditional use terminates. Yeah, yeah, yeah you can if you like. Unless he or she wants to run a daycare, they want to repurpose it for something else and they have to apply for another. No, because they, they could right. do a use that would be an allowed use, a permitted use yeah. in there. But you could, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying, I'm, I'm just more asking about what our options are. I, I, that could be a daycare for the next 100 years for all I yeah. Absolutely, you can put a condition on the resolution if okay. you like. Yeah. All in favor of the resolution? Opposed? Okay, under correspondence, we have again the letter from D Division. Uh, do we have some time there? Yeah, we'll definitely want to meet with them. Do they need to know the issues we want to talk about? Yes, I'll have to send them a list okay, of so issues. We'll, so one will be the auxiliary, auxiliary yeah. police officer. Right? Yeah, so that was called the auxiliary officer program. Yep. Is that what okay. Another one would be uh, sh shifts, okay? Okay, shifts, yeah. Shifts. Yeah, 24 hours instead of being done at the service extension and having a local person. Yeah. Anything else from council? If I think it's up now, I'll email okay. Julie and you. Okay, keep it for another week or so before you send it. Yeah. Okay, okay uh, item, was that five? There's no number to that one. Uh, communities that care, there's Spooktoberfest, just for information. Okay. We'll go to Superintendent Works Report. We have Darren here uh, with the Superintendent Works Report. Any questions to Darren? To Darren? Councilor Moria. Um, I know I, I sent an email out to the group and uh, to Derek and you responded to it, but uh, um, maybe you can elaborate a little bit more, Darren. Um, when we passed a resolution with the hydro um, installation on Hill Avenue block in there and stuff like that, and we passed a resolution for it to be underground and stuff like that, and now it's changed um, to above ground. Um, what are you guys' process when things like that change? Because, like, as a like council gave the resolution guidance that it's to be that way, and it, now it, it went to a different way, and it's all happened, and we're finding out after the fact, so it's like. Yeah, I was trying to go back on the the dates. Um, I know the one conversation I had, it was a phone call, so I didn't have a date. Um, but I was talking with Don Washenfelder uh, from Manitoba Hydro, and uh, he had called and said that uh, um, Darren McKay wanted it to be above ground, so he asked if that was okay, and I said, yeah, it is. And then I, wanted, I didn't see it in my emails because that one was just a phone call, but uh, he must have given a price then because the price was on resolution and then the service agreement was drawn up like two weeks later. Um, so I didn't pass that on to Derek, I guess, that when I'd spoken to Don that it was an above ground price. And uh, so that's where it was. It was between. I must not have passed that on to Derek. Yeah, and I don't care if it's above ground and all stuff, but it was just, like when we look back, the resolution said it was up underground, and I think we needed it. Um, and I think we probably still needed an, uh, an amendment to the resolution to uh, state that it goes above ground. Because <coughs> our current resolution that's on the books states underground. So. Councillor White. Uh, two questions. Uh, Derek was communicating with uh, CN relative to the plug culvert, or not the blue plug, the street south of town? Uh, just undersized, like when uh, everything is melting in the spring. Uh, he went there with Lawrence, uh, it would have been at least a couple years ago now, maybe even more. And uh, where the tracks are, the water was quite high 
on the upstream side and then low on the other just because there wasn't enough through the culverts. Um, so if you just talk to Sean Finn, I believe it was, yeah, he's and he measured, uh, he was out last week, I think he took his quad out to measure the uh, circumference of the existing ones. This has been hanging around for about 10 years now, the whole far corner of town gets flooded every spring. So there's no, in he, he was going to, I think he was going to propose that we fix it and we'll just put the cost or something. So maybe there's no more things happening that well yet. It's, it's in the works. Yeah, like CM you know, might have it in 10 or 15 years. Well, that's exactly what I'm worried about. Well, that's, you can't push them. You can well, try, but they like, silly. That's all I ask that we continue to try. And, and yeah. Not, because we haven't got there, that's a little more reason. With nudge, I don't like the word push nudge a little further. Yeah, I, sorry, go ahead. But you, are you going to talk about that topic so? Uh, yeah, so I was just going to say Derek was talking to him last week and uh, and then he wanted culvert sizes that uh, Sean Finn, so Derek went and got that. And then I haven't heard after that, but it would probably be better for CN to do the work than for yeah. us just because of. Uh, the loads going across it, and if there's any settlement issues or whatever, to have their own contractors do it, kind of thing. But they're communicating, which is all I needed to hear. Sure. The other thing that they were hoping to do some uh, sidewalk work by the Dale Wayne Dale residents over there. I think you and I looked at it. Do you know what the progress area he said it's on the short list? It's on the top of the sidewalk. List. Yeah. So we have uh, two contractors. Uh, we contacted three contractors and uh, one didn't have the time, uh, so we have two lined up and uh, we had separate lists for each to do some projects just because we weren't going to have enough time this fall and uh, that one is the second on one of the contractors lists. Perfect. Thank you. Councilor Delorean and Councilor Morgan. How are we doing at the cold storage at the... Uh, they were waiting on a mechanical part. Uh, I believe it should be in them this week. They need three days to work on it there. And then the doors next week or the week after. And then the gas line coming in. But uh, once they get that mechanical part in, then we can move all our stuff in and they can do the doors after. So that's the critical thing is to get our parts in before we get two feet of snow. Um, Last meeting, Derek had said Sterling was supposed to be here this week. Uh, the 25th or next week. Yeah. Okay. And that's still on track? Uh, yeah. We give him a call just to check, but uh, that's when the last that I heard from Derek was they're coming the 25th because we're digging out all the manholes. Yeah. They're full and of water then, right now. So. Yeah. That's the unfortunate thing is that it takes us a while to do them, so we kind of have to do them ahead. That's why we concentrate on the small uh, manhole ones and we haven't opened up any of the utility ones. Are a bit bigger, and then once they're here, they can start on those, and we'll start opening up the bigger ones. Okay, and then the last thing, can you guys start the dialogue or continue the dialogue with the highways um, regarding the exit in front of the hydro building with the drainage of water? Because it's mm -hmm. that's bad. Um, like it's not rocket science to get a hole in there and dig a ditch. Like the curb is already cut, uh, and I know they took a, a stab at it this spring, I think, for a while. Uh, just with the small amount of rain we had today, that whole yeah, exit cool. is full of water again, and people get splashed and whatever. It gets a, like you, our loader will go down there, and ten minutes later, they can have a, a shape ditch to drain for the twenty feet of dredging it's going to cost. But it, I, I know it's <coughs> infrastructure, like Highway said, has to deal with that. So, uh, can you guys have the dialogue with them to fix that thing once and for all? <coughs> sure. So. Okay. What can you elaborate to us on the uh, MCM invoice? Uh, that one, Derek's going to have a report uh, for October 3rd uh, for a plan for settlement. He's gone through the records of because they did do some extra work, and uh, so he's kind of gone through that. Um, and he just sat down with Julie and Terry, but uh, October 3rd is. We'll get it ahead of time, but uh, that's what you want me to pass on. Okay. So he's going to compile that for you. Anything else? Okay, the motion moved from by Councillor Lori, second by Councillor Morial. Resolve Superintendent Works Report and Receipt. Discussion? All in favor? Carried. 
Okay, council has on line a copy of the handy van report. Any questions to Julie? It's a comment, he's a busy man. Okay, the motion moved by Councilor Delorie, second by Councilor Mora, resolve the handy van report for August 2017 to be received. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Okay, you also have a copy of the management committee meeting minutes. Any questions to Julie on those? Just a compliment to yourself and Councilor Memorial, your worship, for uh, yeah, for the guests who are here recently on that tour. Council reports, Councilor Friesen. Um, just um, brought this so great to see you tonight. I'll find a place to put it up. Um, I have the evaluation stuff that the judges gave to us, and I think the only thing that stands out to me is that we need more uh, recycle bins and garbage disposals on Main Street. If we could possibly get around to doing that sometime. And they also mentioned uh, encouraging residential residents to um, do more composting. Um, I know it can be pain, but it is a good thing. Um, I'm just going to read you the comments that they made. Um, We'd like to thank the members of the Communities and Bloom Committee and the people of Swan River who extended their hospitality to us. Swan River is very lucky in having an energetic and engaged Communities and Bloom Committee that has spearheaded the many initiatives behind the progression of this community's development. Swan River is an amazing community that has many businesses and recreational opportunities available to residents and tourists to enjoy. Swan River is supported by many service clubs and individuals, all seeking out grants and other funding alternatives. We saw a strong sense of cooperation between the various organizations to support the growth of the community. Congratulations on your many current and future accomplishments. They were also very impressed with the school tour. Um, that's why we had educational programs build local workplace capacity, was a special mention. Um, Brent Roush did a wonderful job. He took them through the new building, he took them into the school, showed them the new labs. They were just um, very impressive. And thank you again for uh, supporting us to go down Peace Gardens. It was a wonderful weekend and a very informative and enjoyed very much. Thank you to yourself and the committee members. I will. I'll pass that along. I also had a quick meeting with Kathy Sturman at the library. She's got about 10 applications for the new job, so we have to go through them and uh, maybe make some appointments to do some interviews. That's upcoming. Um, I think that's all. Thank you. Councilor White. You busy? We had the uh, shared services meeting on September 7th, and I think that looks pretty positive with the uh, Thomas Bozeman, and uh, I'm sure we're just like that. I know a few, few loose ends inside. It looks like they're going to join us, which is great. And we had on the 12th, we had the emergency plan with uh, Tanker Patrick, did a wonderful job. I'm trying to look at the website to do my homework. Uh, just, uh, I guess it's probably uh, September 13th, uh, there's a new entity formed in Swan River, the Swan Valley Outdoors Association. And their goal is to spend all their money in the Swan River Valley as opposed to the Potentially we'll replace Docs Unlimited, we're not aware of anybody doing that. And uh, I'll take the fine, but Swan Valley uh, Outdoors is having their inaugural dinner on October the 21st, if you want to note that. Then I went to a harm workshop on September the 14th, and the big concern is obviously HIV and Hepatitis C and needles. So I'm not sure where we are as a town now with the needle drop-offs. I think we built a couple of those needles are showing up in playgrounds and where kids are picking them up potentially. And, sharing needles, that, that has such a, a terrible potential and uh, it's something all of you should, uh, I'll, I'll try to take the website up and send it to you again just to read about harm. We had the airport commission uh, meeting, we had uh, two presentations, one by Councilor Mario was an independent citizen, he did a wonderful job, 
and went in directly for some people out of Yorkton. And then we agreed to order the warm sand, a special granular device which will be on hold, only be, to be used if needed, so we will have that here. And it doesn't go bad. Uh, at the Urban Forest meeting on the 18th, uh, September 27th is going to be Maple Leaf Day. And that's a pretty important day too because uh, the, the committee would like to acknowledge the uh, contributions of Francie Baird and uh, Derek not here today. Derek has been a wonderful help. He's found a bench for us. We're going to put a plaque on it. And there'll be a commemorative service at 10.30 on the 27th. And hopefully the mayor and or some of the councillors could be present. And we will dedicate the arboretum to her. And I guess her like the random people. And then I went to the Splash Park luncheon today at the co-op. Two minutes left. I <laughs> went two minutes to two. Ah, oh, I nearly missed it. Uh, they had a comment, one of the comments, uh, I said, I thought I could speak for calls, I said, we're all in favor, but I said, no, they said, we just don't think we can afford it right now at the moment, the money's that we have. Who knows what the future holds. But he brought out a comment about the volume of effluent that these things produce, and there was some concern relative to the abilities of our lagoon to hold that. So Yeah, we would recommend that they put it in so that it recycles, yeah. treat it on site. Because otherwise, the cost of water would be astronomical. That I, too. Yeah, Derek has looked into it more, but uh, yeah. 100000 a year was the number they were throwing. And yeah. more, they said even more importantly, the money is of course important, but they're not sure that ours, the goons, could handle the product if they run it straight through. So yes, uh, the individual I was talking to was saying they they thinking they may have to go recycle, which would save the lagoon. So a uh, busy couple weeks. Could I call them with something you said? That arboretum thing is great. 10.30? 10.30. That's also the morning of our code red 9 o'clock here. I see that. Will we be done, do you think? Well, that, that meeting is for one hour, so 9 a.m. to 10 So we would be finished? 9 to 10, so Good. we won't start till 10.30. Okay. I have that. You done? Yeah. Thank you. Councilor Moore. Um, I had two things this period. Uh, the first one, I was invited by uh, Mayor McKenzie to help uh, system tour um, a bunch of uh, band councillors and uh, economic development uh, people from First Nations from around the province, uh, around the community, and how we're doing with economic development and things like that. So um, uh, Mayor McKenzie led the charge and brought them to various areas and stuff like that, like the, uh, the pool, the fire hall, uh, areas that we've developed and things like that and explain to them um, how we've done already with uh, agreements with Septoyak and whatnot. And the group that I had in the, the van I was uh, driving and stuff like that was very impressed with our community, um, how we do have already a working relationship with uh, First Nations and stuff like that. And there, um, some of them were quite impressed and they will be going back to their communities and they um, were quite willing and interested in actually doing development, purchasing stuff for economic um, revenue for their re their communities um, in the town here. So uh, they were going to take that back for further discussions. Um, this, uh, and one thing that they did mention is that, uh, and I, is that a few dogs we had running around town, of which they didn't see any. Um, but they also commented on how, how does the town do it, um, the, um, with the bylaws and things like that regards to like uh, garbage and smash windows and things like that because one thing they've noticed on their communities uh, was that one win one smash window leads to two smash windows it leads to three smash windows to a community that nobody wants to live in so uh, they gave us uh, uh, this the guys in the band like recommend or commented on that that uh, by staying up on those things with our um, outside the property bylaw and things like that that uh, that was the way to go to keep that stuff going um, to keep the community attractive and things like that. Uh, especially for those guys that are looking, they have money to invest and uh, are looking for places to put it. So uh, they were very impressed. And the second thing I had was the meeting that we had with our EMO officer, Tanker Patrick, uh, last Tuesday that went over our emergency plan um, in a brief. And other than that, I have nothing. So. Well, uh, well, the only thing that I can add is that I attended the 20th anniversary of LP and the uh, information about their new smart site, site project and 
uh, the economic impact that it has on the valley is just huge. It's 225 employees in the plant alone. They're putting out now 40 cars of uh, siding a week. So, and that's not including people that are all out working in the bush cutting wood. So there's lots of spin-offs for that kind of operation. And also we must forget about uh, the spruce products there and the, the economic stimulator also. Julie. I also attended the Airport Commission meeting last Thursday. Um, I've been in contact with uh, the CPC uh, First Station. Um, they would like to get together with the committee to uh, go over a possible uh, municipal development and services agreement. And uh, we're proposing a date of October 10th at 7 p.m. Is, is anybody available for that? October 8th? October 10th, 7th. What is that for? It's for a possible agreement Who's with on the uh, committee? Whiskey Secret, that First Nation. Me, Phil, and you? I think so. Are you on that point? I don't know. PLE? I thought I was, but I don't think I have any more. Am I? I think it's I went to what Jason had said. Um, I went to Whiskey yeah. with you guys, so it must be that. Probably a Tuesday. October. We all went to Sunday. It was 7 o'clock. Yeah. Where's it going to be at? Where was it? So this, um, it'll be here, I believe. But uh, this is a tentative uh, time and date, so I will confirm it once I confirm it with the other party. Yeah, I had um, Gavin Vanderbind come and visit me today. He, um, He's head of a company called EcoQuest. Um, they work in collaboration with the Federation of Canadian Municipalities. Is he, is he the vice president? Yes, he is. Of, I was yeah. just thinking of that. Like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, he's the vice president of AMM as yeah. well. So um, uh, we had signed up back in 1998 for a climate uh, protection program, and they're just uh, following up on that. And, they would like to come and explain um, this further to us, uh, perhaps at the October 17th meeting. Would you mind having them as a delegation? Sure. To explain when did you sign up for that? Uh, 1998. Oh, speedy. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, so they'll be coming for that meeting, if you're all ready with that. Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, just dealing with um, Lots of bylaw issues, helping catalog, um, uh, getting things uh, in order in town here. Lots of stuff going on. Okay. We'll continue on then with the resolution. We have the resolution moved by Council Delorier, seconded by Councilor Mora. Resolve accounts as followed, but hereby approved for payment. General accounts from check 21214-21296 for a total of 382,847.47 and payroll account from check 4062 to 4070 for a total of 115,974.62. Any questions to Julie on any of the checks? Councilor Morio. Uh, check number 21264 to a uh, numbered manageable uh, company for 18,000 and change. That was a incentive program. Incentive program. Check. Okay. New, new commercial building in town. Any other questions, Councilor Friesen? Twenty-one two sixty-one. Lady, um, that'll be some some extra janitorial work that she did for the veterans community hall when our community hall manager was away on her vacation. Okay. All in favor of the resolution? Carried. Okay, you have the Chamber of Commerce audited statements. The motion by Council Delorier, second by Councilor Mora, resolved the Swan River Chamber, Swan Valley Chamber of Commerce 2016 audit financial statements be received. Any discussion or comments on the financial statements? All in favor of the resolution? Carry.
The motion moved by Councilor White, seconded by Councilor Fries, and resolved Council authorized the payment of the annual grant of $8,000 to the Sun Valley Chamber of Commerce, which will be used towards the Chamber's projects and operations. Discussion? All in favor? Second by Council <coughs> Price and resolve that Mayor and Councillors and CEO will be authorized to attend the AMM convention held in Brandon November 27th, 29th, 2017. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. The motion moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Fries and resolve that Mayor and CEO will be authorized to sign the attached memorandum of understanding with the municipality of Minnetonis and Bozeman. Discussion? All in favor? The motion moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Friesen, resolved that Mayor CAO be authorized to sign the memorandum of understanding with the Swan Valley Credit Union. Discussion? All in favor? Motion moved by Councillor Friesen, second by Councillor White, resolve the Mayor and CEO will be authorized to sign the Memorandum of Understanding with the RM of Mountain. Discussion? All in favor? Carry. We have the motion moved by Councillor Friesen, second by Councillor White, resolve the town purchase an advertisement in the North Mountain Riders Trail System map. That Cost of $119.05 plus taxes. Discussion? All in favor? by Councillor Friesen, second by Councillor White, whereas capital budget for the year 2017 included a computer diagnostic tool curb form to be borne by the machinery replacement reserve for a total of $37,000, whereas such a diagnostic tool has been purchased for $17,199, therefore resolve that $17,199 be transferred from the machinery reserve to fund to the general operating fund. Discussion? All in favor? Carried. The motion moved by Councilor Fries and seconded by Councilor White resolve the General Manager of Recreation be authorized to attend the 2017 Tri Regional Recreation Director Conference held at On and Old on October 17th and 18th. Discussion, Councilor? Or, um, did Patty outline to you what benefits this would be, what she would gain out of this conference versus a uh, nice to go to? No, she didn't outline benefits, but um, she's trying to keep up with her recreation director position until we get a programmer in place, because she's still handling all the programming and everything as of right now. So it's something that she attended when she, you know, when she held the position of, when she only held the position of recreation director. But I can ask her for benefits. Okay, and then second she, question, if uh, she has the funds in her budget, I know they were squeaky on the last time when they had to go through. Yeah. Um, that line item must be pretty tight. Yeah, and um, she usually shares a room as well, so um, the cost for hotels is usually half of what it would be. But, uh, but yeah, I can get further information for you if you like. Yeah, that's fine. If she, if she can convince you, I'm going to be fine. So. Okay. All in favor of the resolution? Of the motion, we to Councillor Morial, second by Council Malari, resolve that resolution 2017-350 to be amended as follows. Resolve the town enter into a service agreement with Manitoba Hydro to install overhead service at the 8 vacant lost west of Hill Avenue. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. 
<coughs> the motion moved by Councillor Friesen, second by Councillor White, pursuant to section 1523 of the Municipal Act. Council go into committee and close the meeting to the public. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. 